welcome back. The West German Foreign Ministry is expected to announce urgent action this week to stop the plundering of World War I submarines sunk off the northeast coast. This follows a public outcry in Whitby where teams of divers have been spotted over the wrecks. Local seamen claim unscrupulous salvages are desecrating war graves in their search for valuable scrap metal. With a special investigation, here's Luke Casey. It's 1917 and the war to end all wars is still far from ended. At sea, the Kaiser's navy is wreaking havoc among British shipping. Leading the onslaught are the feared diving boats, the world's earliest military submarines, and the forerunners of the U-boats. They're known by the initials UC. Here in the Mediterranean, UC-35 intercepts the Admiralty steamer SS Parkgate, returning empty from Malta to Gibraltar. After a running fight lasting six hours, the park gate is badly hit on the waterline by a German torpedo. The end is dramatic. But it wasn't all one-sided. The diving boats could only stay underwater for a very limited time. Even submerged, they had no answer to depth charges. Hundreds were crippled by British destroyers their crews sealed into metal tombs on the sea bed. Much of the carnage happened in the North Sea. More than 70 years after that dreadful war, evidence of German bombardment can still be found in our seaside towns. What can't be seen so readily are the German victims, the wrecks of the sardine cans known as the diving boats. Nobody knows for certain how many lie off the northeast coast, what is known is that there are at least five between Bridlington and Whitby. And it's here that the ghosts of the dead and the memories of the living have surfaced with a vengeance. What's caused it is evidence that the wrecks, designated war graves, are being plundered by unscrupulous teams of divers for scrap. Nowhere is the sense of outrage felt more keenly than at Whitby, a town with a proud seafaring tradition. Local seamen, many of whom served in both the merchant and royal navies, have been appalled to learn that some of the divers have been desecrating the wreck of the sub UC-70 off Sands End. I'm candidly disgusted about it, um, the fact that people will actually go and rob war graves. Um, it defies description. There, is, there, is, there are no words that are in the English language that will adequately describe these people as far as I'm concerned. And indeed, as far as the people of Whitby are concerned, the fishermen, uh, and particularly who have taken interest in the wrecks of the many U-boats that there are off this coast. They've watched them over the years and been unofficial caretakers of these boats. And uh, now they see an opportunist coming in uh, and destroying these war graves for the sake of gain. Uh, I have no words to describe them. I was a seaman. I was at sea for 26 years. These men here they earn their living by the sea. These men in the U-boats, they were seamen too. Okay, so they were Germans. That doesn't matter. They were seamen and they died at sea. They should be left to rest in peace. There has been talk about the lads here getting old nets and uh, trying to drop those over the top of the wreck to prevent them getting at them. But it seems from what I've heard that they're such a dedicated bunch of men I can't see that that would hold them back for more than a few hours. Uh, I don't think it's trophy they're after. It's the intrinsic value of the scrap metal that they want to take from there to line their own pockets. And that, at the expense of dead men, um, is, is just unbelievable. UC-70 had a checkered history. She'd been sunk once before in Ostend Harbour in 1916. After being refloated, she was sent to harass shipping off our northeast coast. The records show she was finally sunk off Whitby on August the 28th, 1917, by depth charges from the British destroyer Ooze. Her entire crew perished inside the hull. It's yours. Yeah. Divers from the Whitby Sub Aqua Club have known the location of UC-70 for about four years. They themselves have dived it regularly as a hobby. But recently, they've been alarmed to discover other teams of divers from outside the area converging on the wreck in large numbers. 
Later, they found bits of the sub missing and other parts tampered with. They agreed to take us to the location with an underwater camera team to find out if any further plundering had taken place. Well, it started two weeks ago when uh, we came out with a, our uh, club and we were diving in this, this area and uh, we uh, noticed a lot of activity going on. Twelve or so divers at the time were, were diving in and obviously gone on the submarine. Uh, so we were getting a bit worried about this and uh, we sent some of our divers down to, to see what was going on. There was a lot of confusion going on because there were so many divers there. Normally you only get uh, two or three divers, well, four or five divers at a time and, and this was, was actually 12 people at the time were going in from this one boat. 12 in shifts? In, in waves, yeah. yeah. 12, 12 at a time? Yeah. Why would so many divers dive on one wreck, do you feel? Well, it's not just for the interest of diving on it. You don't dive 12 at a time because, first of all, you, you, you're going to disturb each other's visibility. Uh, and and diving, you dive in buddies, you have a partner. And it, it's normally it's two at a time. Um, we would say that uh, diving in 12, that it's obviously a, a, a salvage job that was coming off for did, that amount of people. Did you challenge them at all? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, and they said that, uh, that no, they were uh, they were just they were diving somewhere else. They weren't actually diving on the submarine. But we know from the markings that they were on the submarine. Uh, they tried to disguise it different ways. By when we passed the first time, they all held up a broom handle to make out that they were fishing. You know this sort of thing. Uh, so it was it was all a con job. What are you hoping to discover with today's dive? Well, what we're hoping to discover is, uh, well, we'd like to see that everything's still intact. But if it isn't, we'd like to know what has gone missing and, and uh, it can be reported. What did you find down there? Well, we hit the uh, valves in the submarine, and there was a lot more damage there. I believe one of the torpedo shells has been blown up by the looks of it. It's lying on the seabed now. It's come off down towards the stern ends, the gun, and that's still all there. It's been cleaned up, so while they're looking at that, I don't know. Inside the conning tower itself, there is a couple of bits blown up that we're missing, like uh, a telegraph and things like that. It's a brass. Yeah. I went down to the stern end, and there is a lot more damage there. The propeller has gone. The propeller has definitely yes, gone. Uh, and we did find it. We found some bits, bits of wire. So uh, that's what we need. Some of that. What's this? What do you make of that? Yeah, it looks like explosive. Well, the wire you would use to lay explosives. It looks like it. I mean, I've no idea myself, but uh, it's not been down there long, hasn't it? This definitely wasn't there the last time you died. Oh, no, no. say if it had been down any length of time, it wouldn't have been that split. It's new. So they have been using explosives to blow up bits of the sub, eh? Yeah, it looks like that to me, yeah. Did you say that they've started to clean up the gun? Well, the barrel has been cleaned of all incrustation. Well, they're looking for serial marks to try and identify it or what, I don't know. Could they actually shift that gun, do you reckon? Not without... Uh, Blowing it up, no. We're upset about this because, first of all, it, it, it puts it in bad taste for all divers and ties in with the same brush. And, and the other thing is that, that both clubs, uh, you know, we're here all the time and, and we're bringing new trainees in every year. And we like to go on something that can be seen and liked by everybody, you know, and, and something like that. And it, this submarine in its entirety can be looked from a distance without actually touching it, without disturbing it, without upsetting people. And it can be there for years to come. 
But if this carries on, then there's going to be no submarine and, and nowhere interesting to, to dive. What sort of rewards are there, Don, for people who are unscrupulous enough to rob war graves like this? Well, there's, there's a lot of money in, in scrap uh, metal, and for instance, uh, could be gauges or something with even German writing on it could, could fetch a lot of money if it's uh, channeled through the right places. Uh, there's a lot of people collect trophies and things, and to sort of say that it would come off a submarine, you know, would, uh, would fetch a lot of money, I would think. Leith docks in Edinburgh, and the biggest vessel in today's German Navy, the training ship Deutschland, arrives on a goodwill visit. These clean-cut young officers are the successors to those who fought and died in the diving boats. Through an irony of history, our allies now, not our enemies. The German naval attaché in London has come north to meet them and to tell us of his government's concern about the desecration of the UC-70 and other first war submarines. These were officers, you know, of the, the then Emperor's Navy, uh, well-trained petty officers and well-trained ratings, who spent about a year and a half already on the boat before she was sank. So they must have been very special men. They were indeed very special men, long trained, and uh, I mean, this was, this was the end uh, no, no, when she was sunk by, by your destroyer. And because they were the very early days of submarines, uh, they, they were men who embarked on very dangerous missions. Absolutely right. <clears throat> How does the West German government feel about people tampering with the wreck of UC-70? Uh, the, Federal of, uh, the Federal Republic of Germany, ever since, has followed a very, a very, a very clear and firm uh, uh, policy to leave these wreckages or naval remainings uh, as an undisturbed war, as undisturbed war graves. And uh, this policy hasn't changed until today. And I might uh, remind you, you know, that the, the, the total complement of that boat, of UC, uh, UC-70, 26 uh, men, are still on board. The bodies are still there, and uh, that is uh, what m most people have probably have forgotten. As a, as a naval officer, you know, I, I do feel a bit disturbed by that, uh, because, you know, all we can off these sailors, you know, to give them peace uh, downstairs and leave them untouched. And I found it a bit strange, you know, that some adventurous divers trying, you know, to get bits and pieces away, probably not knowing, you know, that 26 bodies are inside. And what we shouldn't forget, there are still today relatives of these uh, gentlemen you know, living today in the Federal Republic of Germany, and that is what these gentlemen are probably not aware of. When you hear that these people who are plundering it are using explosives, how do you react? I, I'm, I'm, I'm very worried about it, uh, because uh, you, you're quite right. According to my knowledge, there are two or three uh, uh, um, uh, torpedoes still there, uh, not being launched, you know, so it, it may, it must be anticipated that handling explosives underwater and coming in contact with these torpedoes, you know, that this could have uh, a rather disastrous uh, impact, you know, to, to the people fiddling around with the wreckage there. Back in Whitby, Customs and Excise have been investigating the affair. By law, any item taken off a sunken vessel in the area has to be handed over to the receiver of wreck, David Nicholson. His inquiries led to a boat called the Maisie Graham, which operates out of Scarborough. She had been reported carrying a large team of divers in the vicinity of the UC-70. The Maisie Graham is owned jointly by Scarborough divers Gordon Wadsworth and Joyce Town. Customs officers confirmed they had written to Mr. Wadsworth asking if he had taken anything off the UC-70, and if so, to return it without delay. Mr. Wadsworth later sent them a heavy piece of metal, possibly a shut-off valve. He told them he had taken it off the submarine by mistake. Neither Mr. Wadsworth nor Miss Town would agree to be interviewed. But Mr. Wadsworth told us on the telephone that he dived purely as a hobby. He had identified dozens of wrecks over the years and passed on their positions to the proper authorities. He said they had dived the UC-70 only once and the piece of metal had come off when they tied their rope to it. They had not used explosives. But how did he feel in principle about the desecration of war graves? There are hundreds of dead men out there in all sorts of vessels, said Mr. Wadsworth. To pick on one nationality is stupid. Anyway, how can you say the bodies are still in there? 
Have you seen the holes in the wreck? Mr. Wadsworth said there were dozens of teams diving wrecks off the northeast coast. People do it as a hobby to collect trinkets, he said. Most of the pieces end up in museums. But the authorities are convinced there are other teams of divers operating in the North Sea purely for profit. They're investigating reports that a second submarine, the UC-110, sunk off Robin Hood's Bay near Whitby, has been interfered with. And police in Humberside say explosives have been used to smash three eight-foot-long torpedo tubes with a scrap value of £3,000 off the wreck of the UC-75 off Hornsey. Their underwater search unit scared the salvagers off before they could do further damage. The police are still looking for them. They should be towed and advised, you know, that 26 bodies are inside. I, and I think it is, uh, uh, it would be a holy and good understanding, you know, to leave them untouched, to stay away from the wreckage and leave it all in peace.